So here we have Cat Cafe, which cats are awesome. So I'm sold. Cats. But I suppose you might as well tell us about the game. Yeah, cats and pencils and dice, who isn't sold? Um, okay, so say we're playing a three player game. Um, you'd roll as many dice as there are a number of players, okay. plus one. And then there's an interesting dice draft. And what we're trying to do in the game is we play as patrons of a cat cafe. And we're trying to attract the cats over to our side of the cafe by building... You mean you don't just chase them? Well, well just jump yeah, on them. that's an option. That's a different <laughs> game, though. <laughs> um, in our game, we're playing... Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But the harassment, the cat harassment expansion pack. Um, no, so yeah, we, we're trying to decorate our side of the cat cafe and our cat towers um, okay. to attract the cats and win the game. Um, and we'll do that by a dice draft and say I'll select a dice, you'll select a die and you'll select a die. And there'll be one left in the centre and we will use our individual die values, uh, dice values, as well as the one in the centre um, to choose what to draw on our sheets. Um, okay. So I've got a one and a two. That means I might draw item number one, which is a house, on row two, or I might draw item number two on row one. So, say for example, I choose to draw a ball of yarn. That will then score me points at the end of the game if I've got the majority in that uh, tower, in that column. So I'm confused. We, yeah, <laughs> we do this dice draft. We use these two values yeah. to either draw um, so I've got a two and a one, so I either draw item one in row two or item two in row one. So you use one of those dice values okay, as an item yeah. okay. and one of them as a, a row. Value. Sorry, sorry, it's, it's late in the day. <laughs> it is late in the day, yeah. It's been a long day, now. the expo hasn't even started yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, you get points based on um, each of the different effects of these items. Um, so the dice draft happens. We then all simultaneously draw our items, um, and then at the end of the game, they score points. Okay. The points for the mice come from creating chains of mice together. So we've got three in the chain here, which will get us 12 points. So it goes two, six, 12, or 20, depending on how many is in that chain. So that, that's irrelevant what other people have then? Correct, yeah. So there's some of them which aren't really interacting with other players, and some of them which are. Um, so the well, in fact, in a way, they all interact with other players because what you're trying to do is if you fill up a tower, you get the, uh, you do it first, you get the higher point value. Okay. If you do it uh, later on, you get the lower point value. Yeah. So yeah, depending on where you place it, they all interact with players. But the scoring of this one doesn't really interact with yeah. players, uh, this individual item. So then this is the floor number. So that's the number in the corner there? Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. So if I... If you, for example, had a five and a six, so say the five was the central value and you chose chosen a six, you might draw a pillow on floor six, and that pillow, which it's is item number five, points. is worth six points at the end of the game, yeah. So the pillows are better the higher up they are. Yeah. The bowls will score one different point, one point for each different adjacent item. So this bowl only has one different adjacent item, so we'll only score one point for that bowl. But if it had different items all around it, it would score like five points yeah. or six points. Some of them are, uh, you can't draw in, so you can't draw in those ones. Yeah. So it's not always as easy as it could be to fill up a bowl. Because yeah. those are the scratching posts. Yeah. You've got to have some scratching space yeah. left, haven't you? Um, yeah, so the butterflies are nice and easy. They're flat three points. Okay. Um, but the butterflies also let you have circles around these paw prints, and you can use those paw prints to manipulate the dice values. Okay. Um, so if, for example, I have a two and a five, I might actually want that to be a four, so I'll cross off those two, and then that will then be a four, in my head, okay. kind of. And I can yeah. do that on multiple dice at multiple times, as long as I've got the paw prints available paw prints to do that. To do yeah. So the butterfly gives you paw prints. The yarn, as I said before, gives you a majority um, control in each tower. So if I'm the only one of any player with yarn in that tower i'll get eight points for that yeah. tower um but if i if someone so else has two it's very much if you're going for those you have to pay attention to what the other players are doing yeah, yeah there's yeah. definitely an interaction element like a direct interaction element to those yeah 
And the houses are interesting because you want to score the houses at the right time. So if I've chosen to score a house now, and I've got this one on floor four, I score that house. So I, you know, say I've got a, a one and a four, um, and I choose to, that's the one, there we go. I choose to draw this house here. I then choose to score the mice. So I've got three mice, so I get two points for each mice, so I get six points. So you don't want to score them. And you can only do each. Each item once. Yeah, right. So you don't want to score them too late, but you don't want to, um, because if you don't want to score them too early because they're not worth any points, really. Yeah. But you don't want to score them too late because they are worth quite a lot of points if you do manage to score them. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, you're racing to complete these towers. If you complete a tower first, you get the higher number. If you complete it later on, in a later round, you get the lower number. The first person to complete three towers ends the game for everyone, and then you add up all of your points for all those items um, by, you know, writing them in this section here, adding them all up down the bottom, and that's your total score. Whoever has the highest score has attracted the best cats and has won the so Cat Cafe game. Roughly how long per game? It's about half an hour to 40 minutes. Okay, and how many players? So it's up to four in this, this version, um, but we're developing it at the moment to maybe go up to five. Um, yeah. Because this is a pre-release for the expo, isn't it? Correct, yeah. So this game was actually released by Mandu in Korea. Um, we're localizing it, but we've changed some rules. So we've done some development to make it um, even more balanced and better. Um, so we've made some change, scoring changes to the, the mice and the bowls. Um, we've changed the footprint. There's quite a few development and balancing things that have gone through through on that. Um, what sort of price point is it? So at the expo, we're selling it um, for the pre-release at $12.99, um, but they're all sold out except for, unless you are like the first one in tomorrow. Um, uh, but it's uh, $15.99 for, um, for the normal price. And we're going to mass production fairly soon after the expo. Um, we only have to do some, I mean, as you can see, most of the work is done graphic yeah, design yeah. wise and, and gameplay wise. We have to do a few rule book checking things um, to make sure that it's, it's ultra clear. Um, and then once we've done that, then it'll be in retail. So hopefully, we're hoping we can maybe get it out by Essen, but that'll be a really quick turnaround. So um, might be a little bit after that.